Okay, so we're going to now find a logarithmic expression for the inverse hyperbolic cosine or the inverse cosh function. So the inverse cosh of x. So to do that, let's define the function y equals the inverse cosh of x. So that would imply that the hyperbolic cosine of y or cosh of y is equal to simply x and by the definition of the hyperbolic cosine function we have e to the y plus e to the negative y on 2 is equal to x. So let's rearrange this expression a bit. So I can say that e to the y plus e to the negative y is equal to 2x. Let's get this 2x now to the left hand side so that we have e to the y minus 2x plus e to the negative y is equal to 0. And now to get rid of this e to the negative y on the end, let's multiply the whole thing through by e to the y. So that gives us e to the y squared minus 2x by e to the y plus e to the negative y by e to the y is equal to 0. This here, e to the negative y by e to the y reduces to 1. So essentially now we have a quadratic expression concerning e to the y. So let's continue. So I can say that e to the y by the quadratic formula is equal to, the term negative b would simply be positive 2x, so negative of negative 2x plus or minus the square root of b squared which will be 4x squared minus 4ac would simply be 4 by 1. The coefficient here is 1 and the term c is equal to 1. So we've got 4 by 1 by 1 which simply equals 4 all over 2 times a. So it's 2 times 1 which equals 2. The square root reduces to 2 outside of the square root of x squared minus 1 and now I can simply cancel out all of the 2's to leave me with e to the y is equal to x plus or minus the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay so we're going to keep this expression in the real domain so therefore x squared has to be greater or equal to 1 so that the square root term always remains positive so therefore the domain of this inverse function is going to be from x equals 1 to infinity. And when writing domains we don't need to write this x equals here because that's implied. But now we have to deal with this plus or minus here. So when we evaluate the square root of x squared minus 1 it is always going to be smaller than the x in the front. So therefore x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 is positive, but x minus the square root of x squared minus 1 is also positive. So let's consider this case first with the plus sign. So we have e to the y is equal to x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. And if we take the log of both sides, we get the log of e to the y is equal to the log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, the natural log and e are opposite functions, so we simply get y on the left hand side. And on the right hand side we're left with log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. And note I don't need the absolute value bars here. I do not strictly need the absolute value bars simply because this in here is in the positive. So it's fine to leave these as curved parentheses and by convention this expression is what we're looking for for the inverse hyperbolic cosine function. So the inverse cosh of x. Okay but what about the other branch e to the y is equal to x minus the square root of x squared minus 1. 
Well, if I try and get rid of this square root sign by multiplying by x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 over x plus the square root of x squared minus 1, so multiplying by the conjugate, we get the difference of two squares on the top, so we have x squared minus the square root of x squared minus 1 all squared all over x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 and this is equal to x squared minus x squared minus 1 which equals x squared minus x squared plus 1 over x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. So we simply get 1 over x plus x squared minus 1. And is this not equal to x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 to the negative 1? So if we take the log of both sides, we'll get y is equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 to the negative 1, which of course equals minus log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. So therefore, y, which is the inverse cosh of x, is equal to positive or negative of the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. Let's have a look at this graphically. Okay, so you can do this yourself with the Desmos graphing calculator. Check it out at this address. It's a great tool, it's free. You can graph any function you like. So the burgundy or the maroon line represents the hyperbolic cosine function or cosh of x. The inverse cosh of x is shown by the green curve. And as you can see, it is a reflection about the diagonal y equals x. And as I've stated, you'll often only see the positive branch of the inverse cosh being plotted. Let's now graph the function y equals the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. And as you can see, the black curve is equivalent to the green curve. Now, if I was also to plot the other branch, the negative branch, y equals negative of the log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1, we see the reason why conventionally only the positive branch is taken because if I was to put a vertical line, let's say y equals, let's say x equals 4, we can see that if we combine these two functions, it fails the vertical line test, but expresses two separate functions, I think it's perfectly fine. Okay, so that'll conclude this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please express them in the comment section below this video. Have a look around this channel for hundreds of more tutorials and playlists to help you with your studies. Best of luck. I'll see you on the next video.